just a heads up, I am going to be comparing Reckoning a lot to Skyrim. Why? Because the whole internet is comparing it to Skyrim. So I'm going to be telling you why it is or isn't like Skyrim. If you watched my Skyrim review, you probably disagreed. I didn't like the game. I thought it was fun. I thought it was addictive. But I thought as a game as a whole, it wasn't good. And it, it was just a giant, long fetch quests. None of the characters were interesting. The game didn't even have much of a personality. Okay, I didn't like Skyrim. I got death threats because I didn't like Skyrim. Seriously, YouTube, you guys gave me death threats because I didn't like Skyrim? So going into The Reckoning, I was hoping for a little bit of a different experience. Maybe something with more personality, something with more character, something with better combat, and I got it. The Reckoning is exactly what I want in an RPG. Yeah, some of the NPCs weren't that dramatically you know, decked out with personality and dripping with, with creativity, but you know what? They had enough personality and creativity in a lot of their NPCs that I actually did, I don't know, form a friendship with some of them. I know, how do you form a friendship with an NPC? Well, I just liked them. It was cool, and it was kind of cool having them around, and I was able to follow the story better. The game is crazy long. I finished all the side quests and all the faction quests at about 55 hours. And then, and that was only having done three story missions. And then I finished the full game at about 82 hours, I believe. That's a long ass game. There's, I believe, four different factions. Maybe there's five with a DLC. I'm not sure exactly, I probably should have checked that. Maybe there's four or five um, factions. And each faction mission strand, they say takes about 20 hours a piece. Doing the faction mission strands first is a huge benefit and same with doing the side missions first because the actual story is very short and the story is meant to be played in chunks of the area that you are experiencing the or um exploring that's what i'm looking for the story isn't meant to be played straight through you're supposed to be exploring areas and doing faction quests and doing side missions in each area as you move along but doing the faction quests also gives you awesome armor and sometimes some awesome weapons, and most of all, gives you cards. Basically, permanent boosts to a lot of your different powers and upgrades, armor, and health. The Reckoning isn't without faults. It does have a few faults, but it, the faults that it has are the same that most open world RPGs have. One being the fact that most of the dungeons and areas and houses and temples and ruins yeah, there were a lot of different areas to explore, but there wasn't a lot of randomization. I think, like, each dungeon had two different randoms it would go through, and each house had two different randoms it would go through. So, a lot of the areas started to blend together. But, they did make that each each environment and each different temple and each different um, dungeon really, really cool looking and very pretty. So, I enjoyed exploring them, even though it felt like I'd already been there ten times. Another downside, but not a deal breaker, was the mission chunk called tasks. Different than side mission. Most tasks could never be completed. It was like collect bones for this guy or collect peasant clothes for this guy. It was a never ending quest. I hate having unfinished quests in my quest log. I hate it. So I didn't like tasks and I hated it when I picked up one because no matter how many of the peasant clothes or bones or earrings I found for this person, it never went away. When I finish a mission, I want it to be done. I want to open up my quest log and see that I've completed everything in there. With the tasks there, yeah, it was a great way to gain money and experience, but about a quarter of the way through the game, if you're selling a lot of the, the loot you find, you're gonna be well off in money. I think I finished with over $2 million and I was buying stuff left and right. So you will have plenty plenty of money. One of the best parts about the Reckoning was definitely the different skill trees. So when you level up, you get to put your skills into a different class. You've got your might class, which is your normal tank, your soldier, your melee character. Then you have your sorcery character, which is, of course, mages. It's all the different spells and curses and magic stuff. Then there was the finesse class, which was your rogue, um, your ranged character. So you could put in any amount of, of skill points you had at the time and spread them out into any of the different classes that you want. If you want to put it all in might, cool. Me, I put most in might and some in sorcery. So my character was awesome in battle and close range melee attacks and swords and hammers, 
but also I could carry out some pretty deadly spells as well. Then once you figure out which kind of classes you want, which you can keep putting them into different classes all throughout the game, you never have to commit to a single class, so you can pick some benefits from some class but be stronger than the other. Then there are different skill trees, or not really skill trees, those are in the classes, but you have your different skills, which is like sage crafting, which is where you will find different pieces of gem shards, and you can create these awesome gems to give you super awesome boosts to put in your armor and your weapons. Lock picking, which you know what that is. Um, detect hidden, which allows you to find hidden loot spots, hidden just treasure chests and grumbles of dirt that had treasure in them, hidden doors, you can find traps, stuff like that, and there's dispelling. Each kind of treasure chest you come across is going to, some are just fine, but others are locked two different ways. There's one that only be unlocked with lock picks, and you're, unlock, you're unlocking skill here. I'm the master of unlocking. Your um, lock picking skill. There's also chests that are locked by a magic barrier, and those are called dispelling. I hated the dispelling mini game. Hated it. Um, so I kind of left dispelling alone. I really didn't want to do much of that. Then there's of course persuasion, blacksmithing, um, alchemy lets you create potions, of course. And if you're an RPG player, you know what most of these are. You don't only have to invest your points into each of those skills. There's also trainers and skill books. Then lastly, in the level up screen, there is your destiny card. Destiny cards are a permanent, like I said, permanent boost to your character. And these destiny cards are depending on where you put your skill points in to your class. Since I had put most of my points in Might, but also I put some in Sorcery, I unlocked a lot of the Might Sorcery category of Destiny cards, which would give me a bonus to not only my Melee side, but also my Sorcery side. The Destiny cards can be changed throughout the whole game. You don't need to be at the level up screen to change it. So if I'm not using a lot of my magic, I can just go to the Destiny card section and decide to choose one of my Heavy Might cards to use instead. As far as combat goes, I only used heavy melee, and of course, like I said, with some magic. My first weapon was always a long sword, and my second weapon was a staff. So I could go on hitting and then quickly switch, very, very easily switch to my staff and use some magic. But that's about it. I didn't really mess with any of the finesse character, like the bow and arrows or the daggers at all. So I really can't talk about those, but the combat was very, very fluid and very easy. Much better than Skyrim's. Like I said, it was super easy to take some slashing with my sword and then just hit the Y button. I'd switch to my second weapon and use that. And you could also um, hotkey to some of your other buttons, different like spells and all that kind of magic stuff if you wanted. Or of course you can use your potions to hotkey as well. I put over 80 hours in this game, probably the longest I've ever put into any single player, single playthrough of a game, and I enjoyed every second. Like, I'm really looking forward to any DLC to this game. I had a lot of fun. The overall areas of the map changed enough to keep me interested, and there's always something new to do. I didn't feel like I was constantly doing fetch quests, and definitely didn't feel like I was doing too many escort missions, which I did feel like Skyrim had. The game kept me immersed and completely in love with it the whole time. This game did a lot of things right, including inventory. I know inventory is a huge hot topic with a lot of RPG players. They, they either like the inventory or they don't. I really like the inventory in Reckoning. I thought they did a great job of making inventory management not so much of a chore. I love RPGs that allow me to have a junk area in my inventory so that when I loot a chest or a dead body, if I already know I don't need this because I already know that what I have is, is much more powerful, I just hit send a junk. And so when I go to a store, I can just easily go to shop, sell all junk, done. I don't have to scroll through my inventory and keep hitting compare constantly. It was really great in telling me why this weapon is better, if it is better, and um, what kind of specials are in each weapon or armor. The game does a great job with inventory management, except one thing I didn't like about inventory is it kept a lot of shit in it that I didn't need. There was one mission I got in the very first area where I had to find 10 books for this guy. Now, if I found a book or two, I couldn't go ahead and turn those in and just keep finding the rest as I go. I had to keep those books in my inventory. So there was times my inventory had like nine books that I didn't need. I couldn't do anything with them. I couldn't stash them in my in my houses. I just had to have them in my inventory. But I've read in the forums that those actually don't, that mission items like that don't actually take up inventory space. So 
they don't count against me when I'm running out of valuable space for things I'm going to sell. I definitely think Reckoning is a game that both hardcore RPG gamers like myself can get into, but also gamers that are kind of new to it, it does not, I don't want to say hold your hand, but it does make things simplified for choosing your skill tree and how you can really go about putting your skills into different powers. It lets you play the game the way you want to. It doesn't punish you for choosing one thing or another, which I really, really liked. I hate when I pick a soldier character and I'm locked into only melee ca melee powers. I like games that allow me to dabble in a little bit other powers too to make my character really play the way I want it to. This game definitely feels like it was made by a gamer. It feels like it was made by somebody who said, you know what, I love RPGs, but this is everything that RPGs do wrong. Let's do it right. And they really, really did a great job of just making a solid RPG. If you thought Skyrim was the best game ever, which a lot of you said last year, play Reckoning and um, pretty much guarantee that you'll be eating your words. If you're on the fence about getting the Reckoning, honestly, as you probably can tell, I cannot recommend this more. I had a great, great time with this game. I enjoyed every second of my 80 hours. I wanna see more games like this. So much personality. I really like the art style. Kind of rem reminded me of a grown up fable. And I really think you guys will like this game. Give it a try and let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching.